Improving the economics of nuclear power plant operation poses many challenging tasks. Costly high fuel inventories due to fast burnup of fuel and time consuming radioactive cooling periods before refabrication lead to the development of rapid fuel recycle systems. One such pilot system is incorporated with the experimental breeder reactor 2 power plant. As a pilot plant, it is designed to demonstrate non-aqueous pyrometallurgical reprocessing and the remote refabrication of a variety of fuels, including ceramic as well as metallic types. Fuel elements are transferred from the primary reactor vessel to the fuel facility air cell. Dismantled, and the jacketed fuel rods moved to the argon cell and decant. Then they are processed by melt refining, injection cast into new fuel pins, and reassembled for return to the reactor. After 135 days in the reactor and 15 days cooling, the fuel element has approximately 300,000 curies of radioactivity and is generating about two kilowatts of heat. The transfer coffin, in addition to shielding, provides a circulating inert atmosphere to remove fission product heat. Adhering sodium is removed by a steady addition of moist air to the coffin, changing the sodium to sodium oxide, then sodium hydroxide, and finally washing it off. Processing begins with the introduction of the fuel element into the air cell. A typical fuel element, designed specifically for remote assembly and disassembly, contains 91 fuel rods, assembled with an upper and lower blanket section. The spacer wire separates adjacent fuel rods in the cluster and provides a turbulating coolant channel. A fuel rod consists of an enriched uranium fuel pin, sodium bonded in the stainless steel tube. Until the fuel rods are separated from the tight-packed cluster, a forced draft cooling is required to prevent meltdown. All operations on the fuel, when it is protected by its individual jacket, are performed in an air atmosphere. For decanning and subsequent operations on exposed fuel, the fuel rod is transferred to the cell containing an inert argon atmosphere. The jacket is stripped from the fuel pin by a spiral cutting action and the pin chopped to short lengths. As the reactor fuels are pushed to high burn-up levels, difficulties are anticipated with this mechanical de-jacketing, a typical problem to be solved in operation of this experimental plant. Radioactive heating determines the shape of the transfer container. Convective cooling prevents premature melting of the fuel. This irradiated fuel is next purified by melt refining in a zirconium oxide crucible. At the present time, required additions of fuel to replace that consumed in power operation 
are charged in the melt refining step. Condensable volatile fission products are absorbed in the fume trap. Other fission products are removed by selective oxidation. Melt refining does not remove the noble metal fission products. Their retention produces a radiation resistant alloy. The process is controlled to minimize the oxidation of uranium and plutonium. The refined fuel is poured from beneath the slag and is cast in an unheated mold. The projections on the bottom of the ingot are sheared to provide samples for analysis. Reprocessing of the spent fuel is complete and the ingot becomes the starting material for refabrication. Precise Semi-finished fuel pins are injection cast. Inert gas pressure forces molten fuel alloy into evacuated thoria-coated high silica glass molds, where it is solidified by a blast of cold gas. The melt-refined ingot is transferred to a thoria-coated graphite crucible and lowered into the induction heating coil. As many as 160 glass tubular molds, closed at one end and coated with a thoria wash, are loaded into the mold fixture. The flat arrangement of the castings prevents melting. This tray is the feed magazine of the pin processor. The glass mold is broken away, ends sheared from the casting, leaving a finished fuel pin. The pin's length is measured electrically. Weight determined on a remote reading balance. Imperfections determined by an eddy current device. And the diameter gauged. The electrical signals of these inspection devices are fed to a data processor which plots diameter and internal porosity indication along the length of the fuel pin, prints length and weight, and calculates volume and density. Jacket tubes with a predetermined quantity of sodium are loaded in a magazine. Fuel pins are inserted. And the sodium is melted under gentle vibration to permit settling of the fuel pin. transferred to the welding station. Restraining plugs are inserted and welded to the jacket by capacitor discharge. The fuel is once again jacketed and can be returned to the air cell.
Final steps of fabrication include leak detection, sodium bond testing, and reassembly of the fuel elements. Leak detection is accomplished by enclosing the top weld in a tight-fitting chamber. A predetermined quantity of gas is injected and a pressure decay recorded as measure of leakage. An uninterrupted sodium bond is required between the jacket and the fuel for heat transfer. Voids are eliminated and sodium wetting established by heating the fuel rods as they are tapped from the bottom. Checked by eddy current inspection, the acceptable rods are reassembled into fuel elements. Individual fuel rods are guided into the cluster by a programmed sequence. As the fuel element is assembled, forced cooling is again required. The 91 elements are compressed into a hexagonal configuration. The upper blanket and sheath are lowered and welded to the bottom assembly. Gauging and weld testing completes the fuel element ready for return to the reactor less than a month after its removal from the core. Facility concepts being tested in this pilot plant include the modular cell design, the actual remote installation and maintenance of equipment. The resulting facility is flexible enough so that modified or new types of equipment can be remotely installed to permit the use of new processes and new refabrication techniques required to keep pace with advanced reactor fuels. <laughs>